All right, today we're going to do an experiment. We're going to see what injection timing does to one of these common rails. Okay, so what does timing do to, an, what does timing mean? So in general, timing in a DC, when you hear people say, I, I bunt my timing in the 12 valve world, 12 valve world, or anything timing related, that's when they start the injection event. So your injector is going to fire for a certain amount of time. But the start of that injection is what, is what the timing is referred to. So if you say, my timing on a 12 valve is set at 16 degrees, that means your injector starts to open and let fuel out 16 degrees before top dead center. So in the cycle of the engine, your piston goes up, it's compressing air. There's no fuel, right? So you can imagine this is a piston, it's coming up, it's compressing air, and 16 degrees of that crank rotation before it reaches top dead center, your injector is going to fire. It's going to let fuel in, and it's going to go back down, it's going to explode, and down it goes, and that's how it works. So you can uh, adjust that. They have 16 degrees, my race truck's over 30 degrees. One of the great advantages of common rail tuning versus a P-pump is the variable timing. On a P-pump, you set it static. It's set at whatever it is, 14, 16, 35, for everything. With a common rail, you can change that to for different engine speeds, for different loads, different throttle positions, and it's all variable and tunable with EFI Live, HP tuners, MM3. There's multiple programs now you can use to tune a common rail engine, and it's pretty nice. So one thing I wanted to play with was simple timing. I have five tunes that are identical here. They're all the same. Only difference is the timing. Now the timing in a common rail is different than a P-pump. I did not set it to 18 degrees, 19 degrees, and 20 degrees. That's not how it works. On a common rail, you set it based on how what percentage of your injection event. Okay, so an injection event, you tune. It's called pulse width. You've probably heard that before or read it on the internet. Pulse width or pulse microseconds. Those are all terms people use to describe how long the injector is going to uh, inject fuel for. And so depending on how long that injects, you may need more or less timing to get it in that window. So you can't just say, when you, you can just set it at 18 degrees and that's fine. But what I want to do is have everything exactly the same relative to piston position. Stay with me here. So, I have it set in different tunes. The first tune we're going to try is all the fuel is going to be in before top dead center. So it's going to be in 120%. It's going to start and finish. I don't know the exact numbers. I could calculate them out for you, but what it works is you'll set your timing for, let's say I want 50% before top dead center, and 50% after top dead center. Or I want 100% before top dead center, and that'll give me 0% after top dead center. If you set it for 120% before top dead center, that means it's gonna be done, you know, and have 20% of its time of injection left before it gets to top dead center. So you can really play with this a lot. And so that's gonna affect your timing based on uh, speed. So if, you, if your injection pulse width on this tune we're going to be 1800 pulse width. This is not a high power tune. We simply want to play with timing only. So 1800 pulse width, it's going to go 1800 microseconds. If your piston's going very slow, it does not need a lot of degrees to get in there because your piston moves a very little amount in 1800 microseconds. So maybe you only need 10 degrees of timing. If it's moving very fast at 3000 RPM, now you need a lot more degrees of timing because your, your window of injection has not changed. But you need more crank angles because the piston's moving faster. This is one of the downfalls of common rail injection system and one of the advantages of a P-pump system where it doesn't care what engine speed it is, it doesn't care anything. It's going to get that fuel in in the window of crank angle. It does not care about time. A P-pump only cares about crank angle. If it takes 30 degrees to get it in, it doesn't care how fast the piston's going, it's going to take 30 degrees, and that's what the advantage is. So anyway, that's a long story to, tell, to say we're talking about, but it's all very interesting to me. I hope it's interesting to you. Okay, so here are the tunes. Tune one, the fuel is going to start injecting and be done before top dead center occurs. It'll be, it's 120% before top dead center, so 20% of its window will be remaining after before the piston hits top dead center. Tune number two, 100% is in 
by top dead center. So it's going to finish injecting as soon as top dead center hits on the piston. Tune number three is going to be an 80-20 split. 80% 80 before top dead center, 20% happens after top dead center. Tune number four is going to be a 50-50 split. 50% before, 50% after. And tune five is going to be 100% after, meaning as soon as top dead center hits, it's going to start injecting all of it's coming after top dead center. Why this is particularly interesting to me, in P-pump tuning, especially in performance tuning, I want 100% of my fuel in before top dead center. I know that any fuel that comes in after top dead center usually results in excessive EGT and a lot of smoke. Doesn't result in power. Now, common rail is much different. The pressures are much higher. The fuel is atomized much finer, so does it need to be injected as early as a common as a P-pump? I don't know. We're going to find out. All right. So the first test, an all test, we're going to run from 2,000 to 2,900 RPM. I do not have a lockup switch in this truck yet, so anything below 2,000 RPM is going to downshift. So 2,000 RPM to 2,900 RPM. First test, 120% before um, top bed center. Let's see what kind of power we make with this thing. Again, this is not a high power test. We just want to compare the timing between the five different tunes. If I had to guess, we're going to be around 400. Let's see if I'm any good. I really don't know. Max power was 357, torque was 705. I'm going to look at the trace real quick here. Oh, we got to go higher. So with this timing, that be, if you can look at this trace here, we stopped too early. The power never dropped. The 2900 RPM is still climbing, which is not surprising because with all that timing, it's going to really like that high RPM stuff. So we're going to run this again to a higher RPM, maybe 3200 and see what happens. Let's give it another go here. Like as we felt like it was nosing over. Let's look at the trace. Long pull. Three hundred sixty-five horsepower. So um, picked up another about another ten. That's uncorrected. The corrected is four forty-nine, but. 365 degrees, I'll tell you the heat was low. I th we ran it credit 3200 RPM, I think I saw a peak of 1200 degrees. At normal operating ranges is around 1000. So that would be expected with a lot of timing and uh, a low pulse width. All right, let's check out the trace of that last one. All right, so power climbed and fell. We can see we've hit peak power on this one. So um, yeah, 365 uncorrected with that pulse width. Uh, it's pretty good. EGT was awesome, so yeah. Let's move on, let's go to the tune number two with 100%, so it's all done by top dead center, exactly at top dead center. So we actually hit 368 on that one, so we picked up three. That's so close, I'd say that it's, it's inconsequential, 120 to 100. Let's look at the trace here, because that is not a big difference in power. This one actually fell, the, there's a little limiter here that I haven't taken out. You kind of see it just drops real hard right here on 31, 3200. Um, this, is a, this turbo is a stock turbo setup, so I usually don't take it that high. But this one actually started to fall before 3200, where the other one didn't. So even though we made more peak power, this one's definitely going to fall a little bit quicker. Okay, so these graphs are very similar. I'd say this is similar enough 
you could probably argue it's just a different run. However, you can see here, the first run did not make as much, it carried further, but the second run was higher to begin with, so which is why we made more power. The only thing you can really, I can really deduce here is the first one did carry it better. You can see the second one really started to fall. The first one just kept going. So in my mind, the first one would like it better, even more RPM, which, you know, that's pretty aggressive timing for a truck. You wouldn't do that in a stock truck. Uh, well, maybe you would. But um, this one, the first tune would like more RPM, where this one's already starting to fall off a little bit. So that's interesting. Let's get another run here. Let's do the 80-20. See what happens. We pick up power, do we lose power? So the question we have is, by injecting the fuel so early, do we actually have like negative pressure on the piston? Uh, maybe the other pistons can, you know, can push past it, but do we have a loss there? And will we pick up power by injecting later or not? Uh, that's the question we're trying to find out. So far we picked up a little power, but I'd say that could be just a different dyno run. If we continually pick up power, that'll be very interesting. So now 80-20 split, let's do it. Three fifty nine. Torque went up though, so we lost a little bit of power down about ten. Three sixty eight to three fifty nine. So we did plateau. It's already come down a little bit. So three fifty nine. Man, again, very little difference. I'll tell you, the sound in the truck was a lot different. I hope you can hear that on the camera. A lot less rattly. Um, Definitely very clean. So an 80-20 split still seems pretty dang good for a common rail, even with 20% coming after. We haven't lost any power, at least in the, you know, again, small injectors. We don't have these monster stuff, but at least the test is interesting to see. So we are down. The first first test is a dark one, and it, it goes further. So we're definitely down pretty much the whole way. We're down. You can see the difference here. Again, this is not a huge difference from the first one. But we, we're, the whole entire graph, we were down on power a little bit. Let's see what happens if we keep going. The next one's a 50-50. Okay. 354. Again, that could be just the next run, but we definitely have a trend here. We're dropping, dropping, dropping. Uh, torque was down about 20, and we lost about, you know, five horsepower. Let's check out the trace and compare this one to the last one. Hmm. So it's lower to begin with, which I, is odd because I started it before. This one I kind of rolled in further down, just had a higher start. Um, it was just behind a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. About the same, so we do have a trend. The next one's going to be 20% before, 80% after. So let's see what that does. So far, it's it's been a very minimal difference, less than I would have expected. Very interesting. One thing I'm noticing, though, for sure, is that as we're running less and less timing, we're getting more and more heat, EGT-wise, on these runs. Three thirty-six. We had a pretty big drop that time. We went from the three fifties, three thirties. That's definitely more than just the two, uh, the dyno run. So definitely lost a lot of power on that one. So the eighty percent after, twenty percent before. That's getting back. That's getting. That's not yet to stock level. Stock levels is like all after. Right? It's all of it's after. It's terrible. So uh, anyway, we took a big hit in power there. Let's take a look at the graph. Okay, so power peaked and fell, getting really high RPM. Okay, you can definitely see the loss in power, the lower ones, our most recent one. This is our one we took to 3200. This is the high power one. 
So the only difference in these is the timing, obviously, and it's the, the split across the top dead center. So uh, we've seen more heat and a loss in power. We're approaching the stock tuning parameters now of our last one. We're going to do all of it's after. So 100% is going to shoot after this. this. is still not quite as bad as stock, believe it or not. But um, it's uh, definitely going to show a loss in power, in my opinion. So let's do this one. The truck's getting quieter and quieter at full power. Uh, I only have the timing parameters adjusted at wide open throttle, so you don't hear it when I'm getting through the gears, but definitely notice the sound difference in the cab. Okay, a whopping 277, so almost lost of 100 horsepower. Bad tuning. For all you tuner guys out there, 100% after top dead center, bad idea. Huge power gains if you put some before top dead center. So yeah, that's, uh, you know, we're got, we're, now we're down to stock power levels, 277. Uh, you know, it's same exact tune, everything, pulse width, all that stuff's the same, just timing. We're going to go back to timing number one right now and no number two that was our peak power one that was the hundred percent let's do just a quick back-to-back -back run and then we'll overlay these two graphs so we can see a big difference with our best versus our worst here we go all right so here's the numbers we're looking at uncorrected 277 650 torque we're going to compare that to our run right now which is our high power tune for timing let's see what happens All right, so 358, so it didn't pick up quite 100, and this is 10 horsepower shy of the last time we did this tune, so things are getting heat soaked. Um, but again, there's differences every dyno run. So, what's our conclusion? I don't know what's best, 120, 100, or 80. They're all very, very close. I'd say those are within the realm of just a different dyno run. They're all very close. What are you laughing at? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> How about there's getting around right on into the alley? Yeah. Should I start over just let it go? I don't know. What do you think? It was kind of fun. What if I do this? <laughs> Is that better? I can you still see it? That's, that's actually pretty good. All right. So what's the conclusion? We made very, very similar power at 120% before, 100% before, and an 80-20 split. Uh, the 50-50, we saw a noticeable drop, and the and then... 80, 20, we saw a big drop, and then a monster drop at 100% after. So 50, 50, I know, is a fairly common thing in the tuning world. A lot of guys like a 50, 50 split, and that was actually pretty close to our, our bigger ones as well. Um, I think you got, obviously, depending on your fueling, big injectors, small injectors, stock fuel, all that's a big variable. But common rails like, time, like their timing like a, a P-pump, but they seem a lot more forgiving. The fact that a 50-50 split is pretty close to 100% before really shows you how much faster the burn is on the common rail because a 50-50 split in a P-pump not going to be great. You start injecting that much after top dead center, you're going to lose a lot of power, add a lot of heat. We're on, the, on this truck, it wasn't so bad, so very interesting to me. Um, anyway, again, low power tune, 368 is the most we did at about 1,800 pulse width, uncorrected. And um, yeah, that's this experiment for today. hope it was interesting. I uh, hope you like it. Hope you share it with your buddies. Hope you subscribe. And uh, we'll see you with our next test.